Hi guys, I'm back. Today I'm going to read 1 Samuel 20 to 25, Psalm 110, and Proverbs 22. Let's get started. 1 Samuel 21 to 25. David went to Ahimelech the priest at Nob. Ahimelech trembled with fear when he met him. He asked David, Why are you alone? Why isn't anyone with you? David answered Ahimelech the priest. The king gave me a special job to do. He said to me, I don't want anyone to know what I'm sending you to do, so don't say anything about it. I've told my men to meet me at a certain place. Do you have anything for us to eat? Give me five loaves of bread or anything else you can find. But the priest answered David, I don't have any bread that, is, that isn't holy. I, don't, I only have some holy bread here, it's, but it's for men who haven't slept with women recently. David replied, well, we haven't slept with women recently. That's the way it is every time I lead my men out to bow. We keep ourselves holy even when we do jobs that aren't holy. And that's even more true today. So the priest gave him the holy bread. It was the only bread he had. It, was, it had been removed from the table that was in front of the Lord. On the same day, hot bread had been put in its place. One of Saul's servants was there that day. He had been made to stay at the holy temple for a while. He was Doeg from Edom. Doeg was Saul's chief shepherd. David asked to him, like, Don't you have a spear or sword here? I haven't brought my sword or any other weapon. That's because the job the king gave me to do had to be done right away. The priest replied, The sword of Goliath, the first one, is here. You killed him in the valley of Ella. His sword is wrapped in a cloth. It's behind the sacred linen apron. If you want to take it, it's the only sword here. David said, There isn't any sword like it. Give it to me. That day David ran away from Saul. He went to Achish, the king of Gath. But the servants of Achish spoke to him. They said, Isn't this David, the king of the land? Isn't he the one that Israelites sing about when they dance? They say, Saul has killed thousands of men. David has killed tens of thousands. David paid close attention to what the servants were saying. He became very much afraid of what Achish, the king of Gath, might do. So he, prepared to, so he pretended to be out of his mind when he was with them. As long as he was in Gath, he acted like a crazy person. He made marks on the doors of the sea gate. He let spirit run down his beard. Achish said to his servants, Just look at the man. He is out of his mind. Why are you bringing him to me? Don't I have enough crazy people around me already? So why do you have to bring this fellow here? Just look at how he's carrying on in front of me. Why do you have to bring this man into my house? Chapter 22. David left Gath and escaped, and escaped to the cave of Adela. His brothers and the other members of his family heard about it. So they went down to join him. Anyone who was in trouble or owed money or was unhappy gathered around him. He became their commander. About 4,000 men were with him. From there, David went to Mizpah in Moab. He spoke to the king of Moab. He said, Please let my father and mother come and stay with you. Let them stay until I learn what God will do for me. So David left his parents with the king of Moab. He stayed with him as long as David was in his usual, was in his usual place of safety. But the prophet Gad spoke to David. He said, Don't stay in your usual place of safety. Go into the land of Judah. So David left and went to the forest of Herod. Saul heard that the place where David and his men were hiding had been discovered. Saul was sitting near Saul was sitting under a tamarisk tree on the hill at Gibeah. He was holding his spear. All his officials were standing at his side. Saul said to them, Men of Benjamin, listen to me. Do you think Jesse's son will give all of you fields and vineyards? Do you think he'll make some of you commanders of thousands of men? Do you think he will make the rest of you commanders of hundreds? 
Is that why you joined together against me? No one tells me when my son makes a covenant with Jesse's son. No, none of you is concerned about me. No one tells me that my son has stirred up Jesse's son to hide and wait to attack me. But that's exactly what's happening now. Doeg was standing with those office officials. He was from Edom. He said, I saw Jesse's son David come to Ahimelech and knock. Ahimelech is the son of Ahitab. Ahimelech asked the Lord a question for David. He also gave a feed at the sword of Goliath, the Philistine. Then the king sent for the priest Ahimelech, the son of Ahitab. The king also sent for all the men in his family. They were the priests at Nog. All of them came to the king. Saul said, Son of Ahitab, listen to me. Yes, master, he answered. Saul said to him, Why have you and Jesse's son joined together against me? Why did you give him bread and a sword? Why did you ask God a question for him? Now he has turned against me. He is hiding and waiting to attack me right now. Ahimelech answered the king, David is faithful to you. In fact, he is more faithful to you than anyone else who serves you. He is your son in law. He is the captain of your own personal guards. He is highly respected by everyone in your palace. Was that day the first time I asked God a question for him? Of course not. Please don't bring charges against me. Please don't bring charges against anyone in my family. I don't know anything at all about this whole matter. But the king said, Ahimelech, you will certainly be put to death. You and your whole family will be put to death. Then the king gave an order to the guards at his side. He said, Go and kill the priests of the Lord. They are on David's side too. They knew he was running away from me. And they didn't even tell me. But the king's officials would raise a hand to strike down the priests of the Lord. Then the king ordered Doeg, You go and strike down the priests. So Doeg the Edomite went and struck them down. That day he killed 85 priests who wore the nations. He also killed the people of Nob with the sword. Nob was a town where priests lived. Doeg killed its men and women. He, also, he killed its children and babies. He also destroyed its cow, donkeys, and sheep. But Abiathar, the son of Ahimelech, escaped. Ahimelech was the son of Ahito. Abiathar ran away and joined David. He told David that Saul had killed the priest of the Lord. Then David said to Abiathar, One day I was at Nob. I saw Doeg, the Edomite, there. I knew he would be sure to tell Saul, Your whole family has been killed and I'm responsible for it. So stay with me. Don't be afraid. The man who wants to kill you wants to kill me too. You'll be safe with me. David was told, the Philistines are, are fighting against the town of Kalilah. They are stealing grain from their threshing floors. So he asked the Lord for advice. He said, should I go and attack those Philistines? The Lord answered him, go and attack them. Save Kalilah. But David's men said to him, We are afraid here in Judah. Suppose we go to Kalilah and fight against the Philistine army. Then we will be even more afraid. Once again, David asked the Lord what he should do. The Lord answered him, Go down to Kalilah. I am going to hand the Philistines over to you. So David and his men went to Kalilah. They fought against the Philistines and carried off their livestock. David wounded and killed large numbers of Philistines. And he saved the people of Kalilah. Abiathar, the son of Ahimelech, had brought down the sacred living Abram with him from Nob. He did it when he ran away to David at Kalilah. Saul was told that David had gone to Kalilah. He, he said, God has handed him over to me. David has trapped himself by entering a town that has gates with male bars. So Saul brought together all his soldiers to go to battle. He ordered them to go down to Kalilah. He told them to surround David and his men. He told them to get ready to attack them. David learned that Saul was planning to attack him. So he said to Abiathar, the priest, Bring the linen apron. Then David said, Lord, you are the God of Israel. 
I know for sure that Saul plans to come to Kuala. He plans to destroy the town because of me. Will the citizens of Kuala hand me over to him? Will Saul come down here? As I've heard it, he would. Lord, you are the God of Israel. Please answer me. The Lord said, He will come down. Again David asked, Will the citizens of Kalila hand me and my men over to Saul? And the Lord said, They will. So David and his men left Kalila. The total number of them was about 600. They kept, they kept moving from place to place. Saul was told that David had escaped from Kalila. So he did go there. Sometimes David stayed in places of safety in the desert. At other times he stayed in the hills of the desert of Ziph. Day after day Saul looked for him, but God didn't hand David over to him. David was at Horesh in the desert of Ziph. There he learned that Saul had come out to kill him. <clears throat> Saul son Jonathan went to David at Horesh. He told David that God would make him strong. Don't be afraid, he said. My father Saul won't harm you. You'll be king over Israel, and I will be next in your name. Even my father Saul knows this. The two of them made a covenant of friendship in front of the Lord. Then Jonathan went home, but David remained at Horesh. The people of Ziph went up to Saul at Gibeah. They said, David is hiding among us. He's hiding in places of safety at Horesh. Horesh is south of Jeshimon on the hill of Hakila. Your Majesty, come down when it pleases you to come. It will be our duty to hand David over to you. Saul replied, May the Lord bless you because you are concerned about me. Make sure you are right. Go and check things out again. Find out where David usually goes. And find out who has seen him there. People tell me he's very tricky. Find out about all the hiding places he uses. Come back to me with all the facts. I'll go with you. Suppose he's in the area. Then I'll track him down among all the family groups of Judah. Then they started, so they started out. They went to Ziph ahead of a storm. David and his men were in the desert of Maon. Maon is south of Jeshimon in the Arab Valley. So and his men started out to look for David. David was told about it. So he went down to a rock in the desert of Maon to hide. Saul heard he was there. So he went into the desert of Maon to chase David. Saul was going along one side of the mountain. David and his men were on the other side. They were hurrying to get away from Saul. Saul and his army were closing in on David and his men. They were about to capture them. Just then, a messenger came to Saul. He said, come quickly. The Philistines are attacking the land. So Saul stopped chasing David. He went to fight against the Philistines. That's why they called that place Selahamakamalekhoth. David left that place. He went and lived in places of safety near En Gedi. Saul returned from chasing the Philistines. Then he was told, David is in the desert of En Gedi. So Saul took 3,000 of the best soldiers from the whole nation of Israel. He started out to look for David and his men. He planned to look near the rocky cliffs of the wild goats. He claimed he came to some of the sheep pens along the way. The cave was there. Saul went in to go to the toilet. David and his men were far back in the cave. David's men said, This is the day the Lord told you about. He said to you, I'll hand your enemy over to you. Then you can deal with him as you want to. So David came up close to Saul without being seen. He cut off a corner of Saul's robe. Later, David felt sorry that he had cut off a corner of Saul's rib. He said to his men, May the Lord keep me from doing a thing like that again to, mas to my master. He is the Lord's anointed king, so I promise that I will never lay my hand on him. The Lord has anointed him. David said that to correct his men. He wanted them to know that they would never suggest harming the king. So he didn't allow them to attack Saul. So Saul left the cave and went on his way. Then David went out of the cave. He called out to Saul, King Saul, my master. 
When Saul looked behind him, David bowed down. So he lay down flat with his face toward the ground. He said with, to Saul, Why do you listen when men say, David is trying to harm you? This day you have seen with your own eyes how the Lord handed you over to me in the cave. Some of my men begged me to kill you, but I didn't. I said, I will never lay my hand on my master. He is the Lord's anointed king. Look, my father, look at this piece of your robe in my hand. I cut off the corner of your robe, but I didn't kill you. See, there is nothing in my hand that shows I am guilty of doing anything wrong. I haven't turned against you. I haven't done anything to harm you. But you are hunting me down. You want to kill me. May the Lord judge between you and me. And may the Lord pay you back because of the wrong things you have done to me. I will, but I won't do anything to hurt you. People say, you will act for those who do evil. So I won't do anything to hurt you. King Saul, who are you trying to catch? Who do you think you are chasing? I'm nothing but a dead dog or a flea. May the Lord be our judge. May he decide between us. May he consider my case and stand up for me. May he show that I'm not guilty of doing anything wrong. May he save me from you. When David finished speaking, Saul asked him a question. He said, My son David, is that your voice? And Saul would laugh. You are a better person than I am, he said. You have treated me well, but I've treated you badly. You have just now told me about the good things you did to me. The Lord handed me over to you, but you did kill me. Suppose a man finds his enemy. He doesn't let him get away without harming him. May the Lord reward you with many good things. May you do it because of the way you treated me today. I know for sure that you will be king. I know that the kingdom of Israel will be made secure under your control. Now make a promise in the name of the Lord. Promise me that you won't kill the children of my family. Or promise me that you won't wipe out my name from my family line. So David made that promise to Saul. <laughs> then Saul returned home. But David and his men went up to his usual place of safety. Chapter 25 When Samuel died, the whole nation of Israel gathered together. They were filled with sorrow because he was dead. They buried him at his home in Ramah. Then David went down into the desert Paran. A certain man in Malam was very wealthy. He owned property there at Carmel. He had 1,000 goats and 3,000 sheep. He was clipping the wool of the sheep in Carmel. His name was Nabal. His wife's name was Abigail. She was a wise and beautiful woman. But her husband was rude and mean in the way he treated others. He was from the family of Caleb. David was staying in the desert of Paran. While he was there, he heard that Nabal was clipping the wool of his sheep. So he sent for ten young men. He said to them, Go up to Nabal at Carmel. Greet him for me. Say to him, May you live a long time. May everything go well with you and your family. And may things go well with everything that belongs to you. I hear that you are clipping the wool of his sheep. When your shepherds were with us, we treated them well. The whole time we were at Carmel, nothing that belonged to them was stolen. Ask your own servants. They always tell you, We've come to you now at a happy time of the year. Please be kind to my men. Please give me and my men anything you can find for us. Then, when David's men arrived, they gave Nabal the message from David. Then they waited. Nabal answered David's servants, Who is this David? Who is the son of Jesse? Many servants are running away from their masters these days. Why should I give away my bread and water? Why should I give away the meat I have prepared for those who clip the wool off my sheep? Why should I give food to a man who will come from, from who knows where? So David's men turned around and went back. When they arrived, they reported to David every word Nabal had spoken. David said to his men, each of you put on your swords. So they did. David put up his sword, put his sword on him. About four hundred men stayed, went up with David. Two hundred men stayed behind with the supplies. One of the servants warned Abigail, Nabal's wife. He said, 
David sent some messages from the desert to give his greetings to our master. But Nabal shouted at them and was rude to them. David's men had, had been very good to us. They treated us well. The whole time we were near them out in the fields, nothing was stolen. We were taking care of our sheep near them. During that time, they were like a field around us night and day. They kept us safe. Now think you deserve it. See what you can do. Horrible trouble will soon come to our master and his whole family. He's such an evil man that no one can even talk to him. Abigail didn't waste any time. She got 200 loaves of bread and two bottles of wine. The bottles were made out of animal skins. She got five sheep that were ready to be cooked. She got a bushel of grain that had been cooked. She got 100 grazing cakes. And she got 200 cakes of pressed figs. She loaded all of it on the backs of donkeys. Then she told her servants, Go on ahead, I'll follow you. But she didn't tell her husband Nabal about it. Abigail rode her donkey into a mountain valley. There she saw David and his men. They were coming down toward her. David had just said, Everything we've done hasn't been worth a thing. I watched over that fellow's property in the desert and made sure none of it was sold. But he has paid me back even for good. I won't leave even one, even one of his men alive until morning. If I do, may God punish me greatly. When Abigail saw David, she quickly got off her donkey. She bowed down in front of David with her face toward the ground. She fell at his feet. She said, Pardon yourself, sir. Please let me speak to you. Listen to what I'm saying. Let me take the blame myself. Please don't pay any attention to that evil man, Nabal. His name means foolish person. And that's exactly what he is. He's always doing foolish things. I'm sorry I didn't get a chance to see the men he said. Sir, the Lord has kept you from killing Nabal and his men. He has kept you from using your own hands to get evil. So may what's about to happen to Nabal happen to all your enemies. May it happen to everyone who wants to harm you. And may it happen just as surely as the Lord your God and you are alive. I have brought a gift for you. Give it to the men who follow you. Please forgive me if I shouldn't have done that. The Lord your God will certainly give you and your family line a kingdom that will last. That's because you fight the Lord's vows. You won't do anything wrong as long as you live. Someone may chase you and try to kill you. But the Lord your God will keep your life as, will keep your life safe like a treasure hidden in a bag. And he'll destroy your enemies. Their lives will be thrown away just as thrown is thrown just as a stone is thrown from a sling. The Lord will do for you every good thing he promised to do. He appointed you ruler over Israel. When that happens, you won't have this heavy load on your mind. You won't have to worry about how you kill people without any reason. You won't have to worry about how to got eaten. The Lord your God will give you success. When that happens, please remember. David said to Abigail, Give praise to the Lord. He is the God of Israel. He is sent you today to find me. May the Lord bless you for what you have done. You have shown a lot of good sense. You have kept me from killing a neighbor and his men this day. You have kept me from using my own hands to get even. It's a good thing you came quickly to meet me. If you hadn't come, not one of Nabal's men would have been left alive by its sunrise. And that's just as sure as the Lord, the God of Israel, is alive. He has kept me from harming you. Then David accepted from her what she had brought him. She said, Go home in peace. I've heard your words. Now I'll do what you have asked. Abigail went back to Nabal. He was having a dinner party in the house. It was the kind of dinner a king would have. He had been drinking too much wine. He was very drunk. So she didn't tell him anything at all until sunrise. The next morning, Nabal wasn't drunk anymore. Then his wife told him everything. Then, when she did, his heart became weak. He became like a stone. About ten days later, 
the Lord struck Nabal down, and he died. David heard that Nabal was dead, so he said, Give praise to the Lord. Nabal was rude to me, but the Lord stood up for me. He has kept me from doing something wrong. He has paid Nabal back for the wrong things he did. Then David sent a message to Abigail. He asked her to become his wife. His servants went to Carmel. They said to Abigail, David has sent us to you. He wants you to come back with us and become his wife. Abigail bowed down with her face toward the ground. She said, I am your servant. I'm ready to serve him. I'm ready to wash the feet of his servant. Abigail quickly got on a donkey and went with David's messengers. Her five female servants went with her. She became David's wife. David had also married a Hena one from Jezreel. Both of them became his wives. But Saul had given his daughter Michael, David's first wife, to Paltiel. Paltiel was from Galilee. He was the son of Laish. Psalm 1, Proverbs 22. You should want a good name more than you want great riches. To be highly respected is better than having silver or gold. The Lord made rich people and poor people. That's what they have in common. Wise people see danger and go to a safe place. But childish people keep on going and suffer for it. Being humble comes from having respect for the Lord. This will bring you wealth and honor in life. Thorns and traps lie in the paths of evil people. But those who value their lives stay far away from them. Start you off on the right path. And even when they are old, they will not turn away from it. Rich people rule over those who are poor. Borrowers are slaves to lenders. Anyone who plans evil gathers a harvest of trouble. Their power to treat others badly will be destroyed. Those who give freely will be blessed. That's because they share their food with those who are poor. Those who drive away those who make fun of others, finding also goes away. Arguing and unkind words will stop. A person who has a pure and loving heart and speaks kindly will be a friend of the king. The eyes of the Lord keep watch over knowledge, but he does away with the words of those who aren't faithful. People who don't want to work say, there's a line outside. Or they say, I'll be murdered if I don't, if I go out into the street. The mouth of a woman who commits adultery is like a deep pit. Any man the Lord is angry with falls into it. Children are going to do foolish things. But correcting them will drive that foolishness far away. You might treat poor people badly or give gifts to rich people. Trying to get rich in these ways will instead make you poor. Pay attention and listen to the sayings of wise people. Apply your heart to the sayings I teach. It is pleasing when you keep them in your heart. Have all of them ready on your lips. You are the one I am teaching today. That's because I want you to trust in the Lord. I have written 30 sayings for you. They will give you the knowledge and good advice. I am teaching you to be honest and to speak the truth. Then you can give honest reports to those you serve. Don't take advantage of poor people just because they are poor. Don't treat badly those who are in need by taking them to court. The Lord will stand up for them in court. He will require the lives of people who have taken the lives of those in need. Don't be, the f don't be a friend of a person who has a bad temper. Don't go around with a person who gets angry easily. You might learn their habits, and then you will be trapped by them. Don't agree to pay for what someone else says, and don't agree to pay their bills for it. If you don't have the money to pay, your bed will be taken right out from money. Don't move all bone piece stones, set up by your people of long ago. Do you see someone who does good work? That person will serve kings. That person will serve officials of lower rank. Psalm 110. The Lord says to my Lord, I'll sit at my right hand until I put your enemies under your control. The Lord will make your royal authority spread out from Zion to the other lands. He says, Rule over your enemies who are all around you. Your troops will be willing to fight for you on the day of battle. Your young men will be wrapped in holy majesty. They'll come to you like the fresh dew that falls early in the month. The Lord has made a promise. He will not change his mind. He has said, you are priest forever, just like Melchizedek. The Lord is at your right hand. He will crush kings on the day when he is angry. He will judge the nations. 
He'll pile up dead bodies on the field of battle. He'll crush the rulers of the whole earth. He'll drink from a brook along the way and receive new strength. And so he'll win the battle. <laughs> now that's done, I shall now do the Lord's Prayer. Please bow your hands. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, you will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our debts as you have also forgiven our debtors. There is no need to temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. See you tomorrow. Bye.